Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. But Baypath will come in. They, they are the so-called Aging Services Access Point. They will come in to your home if you call them. Um, or if you don't want them to come, they won't come. But they'll come to your home, talk to you, talk to you about the programs that they offer. Talk to, if it's your loved one who's got dementia, that talk to them and get a sense of what they can do for you. And then they will do a whole bunch of things, typically for free. Uh, they will offer counseling. Um, they will offer home care. They, have, they can, through a state-funded program, provide up to six hours of home care uh, per week and sometimes more than that to folks who have got dementia. This is not mass health related, so this is not asset related. There is no limit to the assets that you can have to qualify for those programs. There are income eligibility guidelines in that if you earn more than a particular specific amount of money, you're going to pay a copay for some of those services. You'd be amazed how small those copays are, right? So you want to talk to them. It, it, they, they, the Bay Path Elder Services, these ASAPs originated in things like the lunch program, the Meals on Wheels program. These are programs that have been around for a long time. Um, they, they, they offer respite care, they offer money management, they can get you assistance with queuing, with regarding things like dressing and bathing. Uh, they can, they, and, and most importantly, they can get you connected to support groups to help you work through a lot of these things. They work closely with the Alzheimer's Association and they are almost entirely free. As I say, if they, if, they, if, you, if they authorize home care services, for example, they'll pay most of the home care services. You'll pay a small copay to the home care service. You're never paying money to Bay Path Elder Services. So if you've got Alzheimer's related issues, Bay Path is the organization that you want to know about. One brief thing, one brief legal piece about planning. Usually at this point, clients come to me because somebody in the family has Alzheimer's and they panicked because they haven't done any advanced planning, they think. Frank and Mary have got, they own a house that's worth $400,000. He has an IRA that's worth two hundred. dollars They've got savings of $200,000. As I mentioned, they've got income of about $3,000 a month. And they're saying to themselves, oh my God, you know, am I gonna, are we about to get wiped out here because one of the spouses has Alzheimer's? The answer is no. Um, all of the programs that I was just talking about regarding Bay Path, you can qualify for and get paid for um, with state money with a small copay. To the extent that, Mar that, that Frank and Mary are worried because Mary's dementia is going to progress and that theref therefore she's going to need a lot of home care, well there's a major program, which I won't go into detail today, called the Frail Elder Waiver, which will give Mary basically as many uh, programmatically unlimited hours, unlimited home care hours to help Frank keep Mary stay at home. What is there, that it's called the Frail Elder Waiver, FEW, or the FEW, right? Um, there is an income criterion, but in that program only Mary's income counts. She has to earn less than $2,164 a month. I always get, it's either 56 or $2,164 a month. She can only have $2,000 in countable assets, but Frank can have unlimited assets. So in that situation, all that Mary would have to do is shift all of her assets to Frank, and she could qualify. And if she goes to a nursing home, same thing, she shifts all of her assets to Frank. Frank can keep the house. There is a limit to his assets, but at that point, he can buy an annuity and simply increase his income. So they can, they can qualify for all these programs. It's not too late. They shouldn't panic. That's the bottom line, right? Uh, so, now I wanted to talk, but the, the next piece that I really wanted you to think about, because you know, there is this whole piece about what to do about Mary in terms of socialization. But the other thing is, as I said, Frank and Mary want to die and be buried in the backyard. How can Mary do that? Well, one way is to make sure that that house is safe. Because Mary can stay with Frank for a long time if there's home care coming in, if she goes to a place called, like Pleasant Trees, if he continues, she continues to do socialization. As long, and she can stay home as long as the home is safe. 
and Carol DiRienzo, what she, she is a, a nurse who her, her husband is a, is, is a builder. And so they decided to go into a niche market, helping people figure out how to make their homes safe. I was simply amazed when I heard Carol for the first time speak and talk about that and talk about home modifications. So I'd like Carol to go through that in 10 minutes so that I can talk to you a little bit about, at the end about how Frank and Mary might finance the improvements that Carol is going to talk about. Carol. So what are one of the first things you do when you move into a new place? Change your locks to keep you safe and secure. So you've had a diagnosis of someone that you love having dementia. What are you going to do? Here are some tips that we're going to go through to try to make your house safe. When you think safety, the first thing you think about is prevention. You want to prevent as much as possible that you can. You're not going to prevent anything. Everything. Things are going to happen. You're going to have mistakes. Things are going to not maybe go the way you want to. But if you go forthright and do as much prevention as you can by adapting your environment and you're minimizing the danger, you'll go forth a little safer. So what are the four main elements to streamlining your home for someone who has dementia? First one is simplify. Label, secure, and modify. Simplify. How many homes do you know that kind of look like my daughter's bedroom did? <laughs> <laughs> what you want to do, clutter is the one number one thing to remove with somebody who has dementia. It confuses them unbelievably. So you want to have absolutely clear paths for them to go to the rooms that they're comfortable in. Their bedroom, the bathroom, the living space, the kitchen. You want to remove all unnecessary furniture, scatter and throw rugs because somebody, as Tammy alluded to with visual, a scatter rug might make them upset. It might say, oh, we got to walk this way and then this way is a piece of furniture. So you want to remove all unnecessary elements into your home and your pathway. Plants. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but people will look at a plant and they may think it's a tree with an apple on it. And because of the dementia, they don't understand. So you want to remove anything that's poisonous from your home. You want to keep electrical cords safe because they're trippable hazards. And somebody who has a visual impairment may not be able to see that cord. And then they trip and fall into the furniture. Another crazy one would be removing fish tanks and pet cages because people with dementia have an inability to understand what that fish tank is. They see the water, it's glass, they're going to go in, they're going to maybe try to catch a fish. They don't understand. So removing anything that you would think or maybe not even think would be an issue. Artificial fruit. That's a big one. They're going to say, oh, a banana. I'm going to go eat that banana or an apple. And it's artificial. And so they're, going to, they're not going to understand, and then that's going to cause a problem. Food-shaped magnets. I don't know how many of you have magnets on your refrigerator. I have a number of them. My little grandchildren love to play with them. But even at hit their age, fruit-shaped magnets, they think it's a banana. They think it's a grape. They're going to try to eat it. Next thing we're going to do in a home, once you've removed all the clutter, is start to label things. Words or pictures. Sometimes you start with the words of labeling and the words just not coming, so you start using pictures. So you label drawers. One of the first thing I say to everybody is try to get a phone with pictures on it. Because a person with dementia, if they are home and they have a problem, they may recognize that picture, the big plus sign or the big ambulance sign for help. Um, we tell you to place your name and emergency numbers and your address at every phone. Use an answering system because the person with dementia, if they're home, they're not going to be able to take your messages. So if you turn the ringer to low and you have it pick up immediately, you will get your messages that your doctor's appointment was tomorrow and the person with dementia who may have answered that phone won't even know about it. Label the contents of your closets your cabinets, and your drawers. Label the doors of the rooms that the patient is allowed to. Have a picture of a bathroom at the bathroom. Have a picture of a bed at the bedroom. A lot of times what we recommend people is to take a colored tape and put it down the hallway wall usually, sometimes on the carpets they'll use in, in dementia-related places, but pointing people to go. 
like arrows. This is the way to the bathroom. This is the way to the bedroom. By we, the way, in memory care units and assisted living, these are all the things that they do. These are all the things that they do. You can do these things in your home. They'll work. Place a stop sign at the front door. A person with a stop, it'll trigger a memory. Stop. Okay, I'm not supposed to go there. Don't go there. And at the front door, place a no soliciting sign. You don't want somebody with dementia answering your local contractor who's coming to sell you a new roof. And he signs up for all of these things. Put a no soliciting sign. So secure and modify. Doors. First thing we recommend is the person with dementia is put another lock on the door, either very high or very low, with a key that you keep somewhere nearby and a key that you also keep outside in case you get locked out of the door. Um, this way, the person with dementia will turn the knobs and they're not going to be able to move it. We also recommend that you go to your local hardware store, Toys R Us, Home Depot, and they have kits, safety kits, that you buy for childproofing your home. It's the same thing. Whether you're 3 or 103, you want to safety proof your home. So they have knob covers on doors that you don't want people to go into. The another thing that we recommend is you paint the doors of the rooms you don't want people to go in the same color as your, as your walls. And the rooms that you do want people to come in to, you put them in a different color. Because they will just blend. Their vision will become to a point that those doors will just blend and they won't even notice that they're there. 